this advanced challenge, I'll show that Scratch supports more than basic math. This challenge uses trigonometric functions, but you do not have to know trig to have fun with this program. The program uses clones to create a stage full of balls that move out of a particular sprite's way when they're too close. I won't need the cat sprite. Delete. I'll paint a new sprite. I'll call it ball. I'll make it red. And I'll zoom in a little bit. Instead of using bitmap mode, I'll use vector mode to get a smoother image. And I'll create an ellipse, but use the shift key to make a circle. Make the circle. Resize it. Make it a little bigger. Move it to the center. The plus sign shows the costume center. I'll fill in the circle. Color it. I'll paint another sprite, and I'll call it a void. Shrink that back. I'll make it blue. Use a vector again. Select ellipse. I'll use the shift key down to make it a circle. I'd like it to be 20 by 20. It's only 17 by 17. I'll resize. Move it to the center. I want to draw a line. I'll hold the shift key down so it'll be up and down. And one more time, left to right. It's already centered, so I'm finished creating its costume. I'll go back to scripts to make the program. The user moves this sprite with the arrow keys. I'll place it in the lower left of the stage for now. I'll save this position. Use the go to. When the green flag's clicked, I want it to always start in this location. I'll need variables to hold the updated X and Y positions. Go to Data, make a variable, my cur X for my current X, only for this sprite, OK. Make a variable, my cur Y for this sprite only, OK. I want to set my cur X. to its X position, motion, scroll down, X position. I'll set my cur Y, duplicate, my cur Y, get rid of X, and put the Y position in. I'll need a loop to move the sprite. I'll go to Control, Forever. I'll need to know when the user wants to move the sprite. I'll use a couple variables to hold those changes. Go to data, make a variable, my delta x for this sprite only, OK. Make a variable, my delta y for this sprite only, OK. Want to initialize both of them to 0. And another, my delta x and my delta y are both 0. When the arrow keys are pressed, the event handlers will change these variables. I'll go to Events. When the up arrow is pressed, I want to change my delta y, but by how many steps? I'll use a variable to hold that value. Data, make a variable. I'll call it my step delta. For this sprite only, OK. I'll initialize it to 10. Now when the up arrow key is pressed, I want to change my delta y by my step delta. Now when the arrow key is pressed, my delta y will be increased by my step delta, which is 10. This is similar to moving to the right. I'll duplicate. Instead of my delta y, It'll be my delta x changed by my step delta. Moving down or to the left needs to subtract my step delta instead of adding it. I'll duplicate. Instead of up arrow, it's down arrow. To subtract using change, go to operators, subtract. 0 minus this number 
is the negative value. Now I'm adding the negative value. I'll do this for my delta x with a left arrow. Duplicate. My delta x is changed by a negative my step delta. For the left arrow, now I have all four handlers. When an arrow key is pressed, delta x and delta y are changed. Up and right arrows increase the values. Down and left arrows decrease the values. Now the loop needs to move the sprite when these changes are made. I need delta x and y to change my cur x and y. Go to data. I'll get change my cur x by my delta x. And I'll clear my delta x. The requested change has been made. I need to clear it so I don't keep making the change. I want to do the same thing for my cur y. Duplicate. My cur y, my delta y, my delta y. I should make sure the sprite stays on the stage if the arrow keys are used too much. I'll go to control and get an if else. If my cur x is too small, say less than negative 230, I want to change it to negative 230. I'll go to data, my cur x, operators. If it's less than negative 230, then data, I want to set my cur x to negative 230. I'll get an if, control, if, duplicate, if my cur x is greater than a positive 230, duplicate, then I want to set my cur x to 230. Now if the sprite tries to go too far to the right or too far to the left, it'll be kept on the stage. I'll do the same thing for my cur y. Duplicate. My cur y. My cur y. My cur y. And my cur y. The stage is wider than it is tall. Instead of 230, I'll make it 170. Minus 170. Minus 170. Now if my cur y is too small or too large, it'll be changed to a visible position on the stage. The loop's ready to move the sprite now. I'll go to motion, glide, add it to the bottom of the loop. Glide smoothly moves the sprite to the given xy position during the given number of seconds. I only want to glide for half a second. I'll change 1 to 0 0.5. And the new xy location is duplicate my cur x duplicate my cur y. When the programs run, my cur x and my cur y are set to the initial position and is changed only when my delta x or y are changed, which is by one of the arrow key handlers. The x and y values are kept to be visible areas on the stage, and the sprite moves to its new location as it needs to. The program's ready to run. I'll stop it and start it. I'll move around now. I'll use the up arrow sum, right arrow, down arrow, left arrow. I'll get too many left arrows. It doesn't go any farther. More down arrows. It doesn't go any farther. It stays on the stage. This is working nicely. Now I'll program the ball to avoid the avoid sprite. Once I have it working for one sprite, then I'll use clones to fill up the stage with balls. I'll remove all of the variables from the stage. Go to data. Uncheck. All the avoid variables are gone now. And when I select the ball sprite, no variables are available for the ball sprite. And this is good. The ball sprite should not be able to use the avoids sprites variables. This is encapsulation. The avoid sprite is protected from other sprites changing its values and very likely causing problems if they do. The avoid sprite can safely do what it needs to do with its own variables and not have to consider other sprites changing variable values at bad times. 
Also, if the avoid sprite changes its implementation later on, removes a variable or two, or does something different, it won't affect any of the other sprites. The avoid sprite can safely focus on its script. Now for the script for the ball sprite. First I'll get it to work for one sprite, then I'll change it to work for many clones. I want the ball sprite to move away from the avoid sprite, but not let it move too far from its location. This will use some trigonometry, but you do not need to understand trig to have fun with this program. I'll put the three little equations into a procedure block, and we'll all know that procedure block does the math so we can focus on everything else. Again, you do not need to understand the equations to have fun with this program. Just leave that procedure block alone, that's all. For those that do know trigonometry, I'll quickly show a simple diagram of what's used for this program. Here's a circle with its center at 0, 0. The program will change the radius r between the ball and the avoid sprites, so the ball can move away from the avoid sprite, but only for a limited direction. Since a new radius will be generated, the x and y distances will have to be recalculated. This angle's not changing, and it's easy to calculate from the information I have. I have the standard trig functions tangent, cosine, and sine. Don't let these function names scare you. They're only simple ratios of parts of the triangle. I have the new radius r that tethers the ball sprite. I can calculate the original angle theta from the x and y differences. Since tangent is equal to the rise over the run, if I take the arctangent of both sides, I'm left with theta is equal to the arctangent of y over x. That's easy to do in Scratch. The variable my theta will be set to arctangent of my delta y divided by my delta x. For the new x and y values, I'll multiply both of these equations by r, and I'm left with x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. My new x is cosine my theta times my radius, and my new y is sine of my theta times my radius. I'll put these three command blocks into a new procedure block called calculate new x and y. If you don't understand trig, then don't worry about it. Just know that the procedure block will get the right x and y values. Now I'll go back to scratch for the avoid sprite. I'll get the script to work for one ball, then I'll create almost 300 clones. I'll go to events for when the green flag is clicked on. For now I want to move the ball sprite close to the avoid sprite so I can easily try it down here. The ball is going to need to save its starting position. I'll create a couple variables. Data. Make a variable. I'll call it my origin x for the sprite. OK. Make a variable my origin y for the sprite only, OK. I want to set my origin y to the y position. I'll go to motion, scroll down, y position, and do the same thing for my origin x. Duplicate my origin x, get rid of y position, use x position. I'll need a loop Control, forever. The ball sprite needs to know the xy location of the avoid sprite so it can determine the angle of location from it. The radius won't give it the angle, only the distance. Since the user can move the avoid sprite, I want to know what the difference in the x and y locations are. Go to data, make a variable, call it my delta x for the sprite only, OK make a variable, my delta y for the sprite only, OK. I'll create my radius, make a variable, my radius for the sprite only, OK. It's important that all these variables are for this sprite only since they're going to be clones. I want to set my delta x and delta y values, my delta x, my delta y, it's going to be the difference of the x and y position with the avoid sprite. Duplicate. Y position. I'll go to operators. Get subtraction. It's the difference. Subtract the x position of avoid x with my origin x. Back to data. My origin x. 
And the same thing for my delta y, the y position from a void, minus my origin y. I also want the distance to a void, back to sensing, distance to a void for my radius. Set my radius to the distance to a void. I'll change my radius a little later, once this basic part is first working. I'll need to determine my new x and y locations, make a variable. I'll call it my new x, this sprite only, OK. Make a variable, call it my new y, or this sprite only, OK. I'll go to more blocks and make a procedure block, call it calculate new x and y. OK. Call it right after the radius is set. And what is it going to do? It needs to perform the three equations I showed earlier in my diagram. I'll need the my theta variable, data, make a variable, my theta. For this sprite only, OK. I want to set my theta to the arctangent of my delta y divided by my delta x. Operators, division, my delta y divided by my delta x. I'll need the function, a tan for arctangent, pass the value. Next, I want to set my new x, go to data, set, my new x. I'll need my theta and my radius. I'll go to operators, get cosine, menu, cosine, my theta, multiply. want to multiply cosine of my theta times my radius. Now for my new y, duplicate change my new x to my new y, change cosine to sine. Do you see a problem calculate new x and y could have with the value of my delta x? What if my delta x is 0? Division by 0 is undefined, so I'll set my new x and my new y specially instead of calling calculate new x and y. I'll go to control, get an if-else, Move the calculate into the else. The if part will handle the case when my delta x is equal to 0. I'll duplicate this. Operators equal equals 0 my delta x. If my delta x is equal to 0, then the x value is the same for the avoid and the ball sprite. I'll go to data, set my new x, to my origin x. Duplicate. Now I need to handle when my delta y is less than 0 or greater than or equal to 0. I'll copy this, add it in, remove the calculate, change this to my new y for when my delta y is greater than 0. My new y will be set to, move that out, my origin y minus my radius. Go to operators, subtraction, my origin y, back to data, my radius. I need to subtract my radius from my origin y to move away from the avoid sprite, which is my radius away. Else, my delta y is less than or equal to zero, so I need to add my radius to move below it and away from the avoid sprite. I'll duplicate the set and change minus to plus. While the program's running, the ball sprite figures out how far away it is from the avoid sprite in both the x and y distances and the total distance. If there's no change in the x, it can't use the calculate new x, y, so it calculates the values of new x, y directly. Otherwise, if my delta x is not equal to zero, it can use the division and calls calculate new x and y directly. I'll move this out of the way.
My diagram showed that the calculations of the new x and y values assume the ball was at the origin 0, 0. It's very likely it's not at 0, 0. Instead, it's at origin x and origin y. So just as up here, my new x and my new y will need to be adjusted after the calculate new x and y call. I'll duplicate this if-else, put it after the calculate call, change this to be my delta x is less than 0. When it's less than 0, it'll change the value. Otherwise, it'll set both. I'll change the y to my new x. The x and y components of the new radius have already been recalculated. They're in my new x and my new y. My new x and my new y need to be subtracted from both of the origin values, my origin x. Now my new x is going to be set to my origin x minus my new x that was calculated in the procedure. The same thing is done for my new y with the y components. When my delta x is less than zero, both values need to be added, not subtracted to my origin x, so I can use change. I'll get the change command. My new x. I'll change it by adding my origin x. And I'll do the same for my new y with my origin y. Now that my new x and my new y values have been calculated for all cases, I'll move this up a little bit go to motion, can use the glide command. Glide for a twentieth of a second, which is 0 0.05. 0 0.05 times 20 is equal to 1. The sprite will move to the new x and the new y values. Duplicate my new x, duplicate my new y. I don't need all these variables on the stage. Data uncheck, clear up the stage, take a look at all the code, shrink the stage. When the program's running, the ball is running in an infinite loop, determining the new x and new y values, then gliding to it. Right now, the red ball will move far away from the avoid sprite. A little bit later, I'll make it so it's a lot closer. I'll get the stage back to its normal size, and it's ready to run. Stop and run. The red ball moved away from the sprite, it's really avoiding it, and as I move the sprite around, it tries to avoid it. Getting as far away as it can, I'll stop it now, <laughs> and there it goes, I'll stop the program. Then I'll go back to the ball sprite. Now to keep the ball close to where it started, its original xy values. I'll make a couple variables, they'll be shared with all the sprites, make a variable, I'll call it effective distance. Okay, and I'll make another one. Call it effective sphere size. Okay, for all sprites. I'll move the effective sphere size down here and the effective distance. Now to change my radius value. Here's a formula that let me have some fun, as you'll see in just a little bit. I want to set my radius my radius to my radius divided by the effective sphere size. I want to subtract that from effective distance. I'll go to operators now. Division. My radius. Effective sphere size. Subtract that from effective distance. Set my radius to that value. Now I can play with effective distance and effective sphere size to change the radius. Then I'll go to control. If my radius ends up being less than zero, duplicate my radius. Then I want to set my radius to zero. Back to data. Set my radius to zero. I'll put that in after this set. I'm starting with the original my radius value, the distance to the avoid sprite. Then I'll be able to change the effective variable values and make sure radius is not negative. I want to initialize effective distance and effective sphere size. I'll add a couple sets up here. 
effective distance, effective sphere size, effective distance, I'll set to 20, effective sphere size, I'll set to 5. There's nothing special about this formula. It's just something that I can have some fun with, as you'll see. I'll start the red ball again over by the avoid sprite. I'll try it now. Make sure it's stopped. Run. The red ball moved away from the avoid sprite, but it's not running all the way across the stage. If I get too close to it, it's trying to stay away from it, but it's acting like it's tethered to a point over here. And as I move it around, it's staying away, it's staying away. But now it can't run far away on the stage. That's working nicely now for one ball sprite. I'll stop it. Go back to the ball sprite script. Now I'll create all the clones and try different effect variable values. I'll go to Control. When I start as a clone, I'll have this start as a clone. All of the sprites will do this. Effective distance and effective sphere size will always be done initially. Reattach that. I don't want the creating sprite to be visible, only the clones to be visible. I'll go to Looks, Hide. Then I want each clone to become visible just before it starts its infinite loop. I want a procedure block to create the clones. More blocks. Make a block. Create clones. OK. Create the clones after the green flag is clicked. Now to create the clones. I'll make some room over here. Shrink the stage. Move this out of the way a little bit. Define create clones. I want to make a bunch of rows of sprites in the middle of the stage. I'll go to Motion. I'll start at Y of 135. Go to Control for Repeat Until. I want to do this until the Y position is less than negative 135. I'll go to Operators, less than, less than negative 135. Go to Motion, scroll down, Y position. Repeat this until the Y position is less than negative 135. For each one of these rows, I want to create sprites across the row. I want to set X to negative 200. I want it to repeat, duplicate. I'll get rid of the set X. I want it to repeat until the X position is greater than 200. I want to create the clone. Move this out of the way. I'll go back to motion. I'll change the X value, but change it by how much? I want to change it by the size of the costumes. I'll create a variable to hold the value. Go to data, make a variable, call it spacing size for all sprites, OK. Don't need it on the stage. And I want to initialize it to 20. Spacing size, 20, the size of the costumes. Now I can change X by spacing size. When this inner loop is finished, I need to change the row. So I need to change the Y position. Go back to Motion, change Y position. I need to change it by spacing size, so I'll duplicate, but I need to subtract the value. I'll go to Operators. I can add the negative value, 0 minus spacing size. It's ready to run now. I'll expand the stage, make sure it's stopped. I'll click the green flag. Good. It's creating all of the ball sprites. Takes a little bit of time, there's a lot going on. Almost finished. And finished. You can see some movement here by the avoid sprite. These balls are trying to move away from the avoid sprite. Looks like it might be working, but I want to change the color. This is too much red for me. I'll stop it. 
I'll set the color effect for each of the clone sprites so its color will be different depending on how far it is from the center of the stage. I'll go to my diagram. I'll use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the distance from the center of the stage, and I'll use that distance value for the color effect value. r squared equals x squared plus y squared by the Pythagorean theorem. When I take the square root of both sides, I get r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. r is the distance, so I'll ignore the negative root. To implement this in Scratch, the x position times itself is x squared, and the y position times itself is y squared. I'll add x squared plus y squared, then take the square root of all of that and use that value for the color effect value. I'll add this block in Scratch now. I'll make some room, shrink the stage, I'll go to Motion, get my x and y positions, x times x, y times y. I'll go to Operators, get a couple multiplies, x position times itself squared, multiply, y position times itself is squared, add these two terms together, add y position, x position, now take the square root of all of that, good, now I need to set the color effect, go to looks, set color effect to that expression. I want to do this just before it becomes visible. I'll get the blocks not to overlap. Better. It's ready to run. I'll go back to normal size. I'll stop it. I'll run it. Now I've got a nice pattern filling it in more and more. More interesting pattern than all the reds. Sprites are trying to avoid the avoid sprite. I'll make effective distance. Double click, double click. Slide it up a little bit. And the effective sphere size. Now these are both adjustable. I can pick up the sprite and move it. See all the sprites are avoiding it. I'll use the arrow keys. Up arrows. right arrow. See how the sprites are avoiding it with these new values. I can change how large the effect is. And for the distance, you can make some big changes too. It's going to be kind of fun to play with. The smaller sphere size Go back to here. Almost looks like there's a sphere around the avoid sprite. Each of these have a little bit of a different visual effect, something to play with and get the feel for if you like. I'll finish with this advanced challenge. I encourage you to play with the program and get comfortable calling functions and creating clones. Try changing the program. Try different color effect calculations. Try different effective distance and effective sphere sizes. But above all, have fun with the program.